Welcome back. If we haven't met yet, my name's TJ Erickson. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be out walking because some of our lakes still aren't quite ready. And we are going to be running and gunning, trying a lot of different areas, giving you some tips and tricks and locations so you can catch more fish right now. So stick around. Here we go. This may be a ride. I'm gonna get my tip up set up here and this is a similar setup to what I used last time. It is a number two octopus hook um, with a split shot right above it. Today I have a little bit bigger minnow on. I'm gonna start with a sucker minnow and then maybe I might move to something a little bit smaller. And I had a lot of questions about the tip up that I used in my last video. Um, the tip up is called a finicky fooler. Um, I really like it. You don't have to have a bobber stop, don't have to have things set up. So you can use almost any rod with it. All right, I got my tip up set up. So I'm gonna start doing some hole hopping. What I did is I got out here really early and I drilled a bunch of holes before it got dark. I like doing that because you're not gonna spook fish. You're gonna be able to get a bunch of holes mapped out and those fish are probably gonna spook out right away, but eventually they'll move right back in. So I have a bunch of holes drilled up and we're just gonna kind of hop from one hole to the next. Leg up. Taking some line. I'm sure my camera's super foggy. <sighs> Need to catch my breath. I feel um. Ooh, that's a little better fish. I don't know if it's a pike. Be a big walleye. Oh, that's a good walleye. That's a good walleye. Sweet. That is nice walleye. Man, is it foggy out. Get that guy out. I don't know if I've ever quite seen teeth on a walleye like that. There we go, a little bit over 20 inches. What a sweet fish. One thing I want to point out, look at the teeth on this thing. That is just crazy. Those are some wicked, wicked teeth. Get this guy back down. There he goes. Sweet. I'm out of my bigger minnow, so I'm gonna to switch to this tungsten jig and a fat head. And I'll just let this swim around down there on the tip up. All right, well, sweet first fish for the day coming on the tip up. Um, that one was on the tip up on the sucker minnow. And where this one is set up is in kind of shallow. I'm in about nine to 10 feet of water right here. A little bit shallower, there's some weeds up here, but it's a little bit of an inside bend. And I'm gonna show you on the map here. I love these inside bends, these inside turns, especially early ice. I don't know what it is, but it seems like fish just kind of funnel into there. The other thing that I did is we had this inside turn and it transitions to kind of a break line. So I also drilled out some holes along that break line and I've been kind of hole hopping along that break line, drilled a few holes out in this inside turn. So we bounce around here a little bit and then I'm gonna also keep working down that break line and just kind of hole hopping, running around, trying to get on top of fish and trying to find some active fish. Oh, flag up, flag up, flag up, flag up. You can see it pull in line. I wonder if this is a pike the way it's running. Okay, I think we got everything. Oh, I forgot I had this. Not big, whatever it is. Let's see what we have. Bluegill. Big bluegill. These are always fun too. There we go. I don't know how well that's picking up. Not what I was expecting. Um, although I did switch to that smaller jig and a fathead minnow, but that was still a pretty big minnow for this bluegill to eat. Whoa, whoa. We'll get that one back down. Sweet fish. Awesome. Maybe that's a bigger fish. You saw. There we go. Oh, shoot. Wasn't a giant. Wasn't a giant, but oh, either way, that's a killer. 
Ah, missing fish is never fun. Brought it up, felt like I got pretty good hooks into it. Oh, it might be back. Oh, if it is, it's gotta be a pike. Gotta be a pike. Gotta find out. No, it's a walleye. Wow. <laughs> Sweet. Oh man, it is so foggy. It's gonna to be tough to see that, but <laughs> another walleye. Wow, that one came back a second time. That's what bit the first time. And I was like, if it's coming back, it's gotta be a pike. But sure enough, right on, that is the frostbite dinner bell. Just got some of those in, just trying them out. Seemed to like them so far, but that one came up a second time. Ooh, and just smoked it. It was buried in there deep. Awesome. Oh, of course, you got my live scope screen wet. Well, this is my rig to clean off my camera, and apparently I got blood on it. So, if you can't see me, it's because there's blood on my camera. That fish was also kind of in this inside bend. I've been kind of hanging out around in here since we caught um, that bigger one. So I've drilled out this inside turn a little bit more um, and just gonna kind of keep cruising around in here unless there's a little bit of a lull. Then I'm gonna start working down that brake line again. One of the things that's been a complaint of the live scope is just how heavy and how big it is. Um, it's got a lot of parts to it and it can be really tough to whole hop with, especially if you're trying to do any sort of filming like I am right now. There's a lot of gear. So one of the things that I did is I went out and I got a small jet sled, it's called. That way I can have my live scope in there. I can have a lot of different gear and I can still move around really well um, while having all my stuff and being able to hold up. I just have to have a sled instead of carrying around a Vexlar. So I'm gonna show you a little bit um, what I'm working with here. So basically I have my live scope front and center and I have it so I can have my GoPro on it. That works really well. I can stick a couple rods in some of these side compartments. Um, I'd really like to actually put some rod holders on here um, in order to just kind of be a little more efficient and keep them out of the way. Then I'm able to have my bait. I just have some other gear, some camera gear, some tackle, um, a light, just a lot of different things. I have my tripod actually strapped down to it. I have a power box back there that's charging my camera. That one's just a homemade one out of an ammo box and a Dakota lithium battery. When I go, I'm able to kind of just pick up my transducer, pick up this, um, and I'll just walk to the next hole, plop my transducer in, everything's set. It's really efficient actually, and sometimes I'll pull this out even when I have my flip over house. This is my kind of hole hopping setup that I can use even when I have my big house out here. So if you're trying to figure out how to be able to stay mobile, run and gun with a live scope, this is an awesome setup. I know there's some other things that you can do, but being able to have one of these small sleds like this, it's easy to pull even when you have a little bit more snow. You can pack some other stuff in there so that way you have your pliers and all your different gear when you're out fishing. So that's my setup to be efficient and be able to move quickly with my live scope while I'm kind of out running and gunning, drilling a lot of holes. Oh, there's a flag. Running pretty good. All right. was running then it kind of stopped probably give it a little bit with the spring bobber yeah I don't know if that's a much size to it what do we got here a little bit bigger I was thinking it was maybe gonna be a bluegill but I'm not oh that looked like a pike <laughs> ran over that way now Let's see if we can, yep, gotta be a pike. There it is, not a big one. Shoot, if he gets in, that'd be nice. He doesn't wanna cut me off. Oof, and he's down his throat too. Oh, oh, oh. One of the things that's nice, I like how it's opening. If you go right in, it's not always great to damp to Go through the gills, but sometimes you have to, and then you can turn it out just like that. And you are. Oh, if he opens up now. Don't have my mouse spreaders either. Try to knock it out there. I'm just getting you in right back, not showing off to the camera because not much worth showing off. But there, we can get him right back in. Can swim down. Instead of really digging in deep to it from the top of the mouth. Um, that can just even do more damage. I know you're going in through the gills, but you can pop that out quicker, get that fish back, um, 
and most often it doesn't damage too much of the gills but you can just get that angle to turn it out so if something does swallow it deep like that i don't know if you could see that on my head cam um, but hopefully you can see a little bit of how to go in through the gills twist that out so that we can get the fish back in the water as quickly as possible Ooh, that's something coming in higher oh that's big no 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 that was a big fish oh come back that was huge oh there's coming back it's coming back it's coming back oh that's a pike for sure yeah this may be a ride i need to lose that this is gonna be a ride <laughs> oh that was so cool oh man Oh boy, that was so cool. Seeing that fish come up is just so fun. Oh, he's right on the edge of the ice here. Oh man, trying not to get hung up on the edge of the hole. Not a giant, thought it was bigger, but again, I get so screwed up by getting zoomed in, but it's definitely a nice fish. <laughs> Sweet. Get that head up the hole. Oh, he is. Now this might be dangerous. I don't know if I'm gonna get this fish in when they get twisted up like that. That's a decent fish. Uh, this many runs. Oh man. This. Oh, there it is. Sweet. Oh, right in the corner of the lip. And we will get that out right away. Pull it up for a quick picture. Oh, there we go. Another sweet fish. But that is so awesome. I'm going to put it on the bump board real quick. That one is... 32 and a quarter so definitely not a giant by lake of the woods or some of those bodies of water but for some of these smaller lakes in this park rapids area just a sweet sweet fish get that guy headed back down Whew. Whew. i tell you what i don't care what species it is when you get a fight like that when you get a fish like that it is just so much fun now here on this foggy day it is just a little bit miserable conditions because everything's wet but man there's nothing i'd rather be doing than getting out here fishing again so all i've been catching these last couple on is a gold dinner bell with just a head of a fathead minnow i want to talk really quickly about the rods that i'm using um something i don't talk about all the time but that one that i just caught that pike on was actually a saint croix custom ice it is the 32 medium light fast. I really like this one for in the shack because it's nice and short, got a lot of sensitivity. You know, maybe not great for those bigger fish, but you can see it handled that pike okay. The rod that I've been using for my rattle bait is actually, oh, that's another bigger fish again. That's gotta be another pike. Jeez. That thing just demolished it. I guess I'll get back to talking about rods in a little bit. Yeah, another decent pike, not a giant. This thing is so crazy, holy cow. It is doing those turns like mad. If I can't get this one up the hole right away, it might be interesting. Whoa, that was convenient. Swam right up for me. Holy cow, this guy is squirrely. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Wow, right in the edge. Again, so lucky to be able to get that fish in. There, not quite as big, but still not a bad fish. Just came in and demolished it. Sweet. Again, got that one out quick. Right back in. Oh my gosh, these things are feisty. Got everything wet. That was gonna be another interesting land because that fish was so squirrely. It was turning and it was spinning 
and if that thing went to jumped up the hole right there it might have been a little bit before i got it in all right so again back to the rods i was using the rod that i've been using my rattle oh gosh are you kidding me i bet that one spooked when i set down my rod didn't it so again for the third or fourth time the rattle bait rod that I'm using is actually a rod that's been built by my buddy Mike. He does it for a hobby and he does an awesome job. Um, this one is a 40 inch and I believe I'd have to ask him, but I believe it's a medium light. And I really like this rod. This is kind of like your run and gun style rod, something a little bit longer that you maybe don't want to use in the house. I've been really liking it so far. It's nice to have a little bit more rod when you're outside and you don't need the smaller space. And then for my tip up, when I first started, I was using a bigger sucker minnow. And when I use a bigger sucker minnow, I like to use my JT Black Rain. It's again, a 40 incher, got a little more backbone for some of those bigger fish. And then when I ran out of sucker minnows, um, I switched over to that small tungsten jig. And with that one, I'm using my JT Walleye Snare, which I also really like with that finicky fooler. I feel like that's a really great combo. Um, that one's a 32. It's got that noodle tip on it with a little spring bobber, just a really cool dead sticking type rod. So those are some of the rods that I'm running for today. Oh my goodness, I cannot bend down like that for very long. These knees don't work like that. <sighs> Bit and then turned. It like just bumped it. What is it doing? There he's back. Jeez. <laughs> These bikes have just been smoking. <laughs> that first time you bit and just turned. And then he kind of came back. He was coming directly behind me on the live scope, so you couldn't even really see him. You could just barely see a little flicker because he came in right at the same depth. Man, these things are just so... Oh, man. Getting it in my ice a little bit. But you can just see that come right behind my lure, so it was a little bit tougher to see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, that's another nice fish. That one might be the biggest of the day. Oh, yeah, for sure. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh man, that was dumb. Oh, shoot. I was just going down to reach for that fish and as I was doing that, it got hooked around my reel. Oh, that's painful. That was a big fish. That was definitely the biggest pike of the day, probably in that mid thirties range. Oh, that was dumb. That was dumb. Line management is so important. And I did a very poor job right there. You might be thinking, ah, that's okay. It was just a pike. But one, it was a big pike. And two, I don't care what kind of fish it is. I hate missing fish. Well, we are in the waning moments of our time here today. Not a stellar day, especially as the walleyes are considered, but still some fun action, some nice fish, quality walleye, quality pike, and even a quality gill. Either way, I'm happy to be out. Anytime you can catch some fish like that in just two, three hours, and two, three hours of fishing when you're filming ends up being more like one to two hours of fishing with all gear and everything like that that I have to get set up. So still some fun action in the short time that we had. Again, if you enjoyed this video for the tips, the tricks, the fish catching, the entertainment, whatever it was, I would love it if you would subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I'm got some more fun stuff coming down the way so I'm gonna start packing up here and we'll see you next time. Yeah.